This is a special episode of the Picture This Photography podcast. We're in the field today. Yeah, we're in Fitch Pond Wildlife Preserve. It's close to us and it's a beautiful spot. So we thought we'd share it with you because today we're going to be talking about tips for getting better wildlife photos. This is everything except the gear. We've already talked about the gear to no end. Now we want you to understand the stuff that really matters, the stuff that will make a huge difference in your wildlife photos. First, we want to tell you about our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you want your own website or portfolio or store, you can make it happen with Squarespace, and it's so easy to do. You could finish one in like 10 minutes, I swear. So go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, and if you like the free trial, which is 14 days, and you want to buy it, I have a 10% off coupon, and that's Chelsea, C-H-E-L-S-E-A. So thanks, Squarespace. I have my wildlife photos up in my own Squarespace portfolio, and it looks so much better than social media. You should it definitely does. check it out. All right, so let's get into the first thing, and it's probably the first thing you notice here, and that's that we're all bundled up and we're comfortable. Being comfortable is super important because you have to sit there for a long time when you're getting wildlife photos. So look at the weather, look at the conditions, and then be over-prepared. And that means things like hand warmers, extra hats, extra socks, waterproof shoes. I'll tell you a real story that happened just this past weekend. We met up with our friend Tommy, who had found a snowy owl in Connecticut. And I bundled up, I put on like every single piece of clothing. Tommy got great shots of that owl flying. I did not get great shots of the owl flying. I got shots of the owl perched because my feet got cold. Even though I was bundled up, I didn't prepare fully for the extent of the cold there. It was just way windier on the shoreline than I expected. But my limitation was not this $20,000 worth of gear that I was carrying. It was the fact that my feet got cold. Some $10 socks would have made me get a better picture. It's definitely important to have like those extra socks or the waterproof shoes when you realize you have to walk across a stream to get where you're going or something. Or if you're in the heat, you want to make sure that you have bug spray. The things you don't think about, you're not going to sit there if you're being attacked by mosquitoes, right? They have bug spray that's safe for your gear too, so you can look into that. Make sure you have plenty of water so that you're not going to get dehydrated or heat stroke or anything. And even though it's hot, make sure you still have the appropriate shoes on. Tony broke one of our camera lenses because he had flip-flops on, got stuck in the mud and then fell. So you want to be careful. Here's a saying I just made up. What? If you're not overprepared, you're not prepared. <laughs> That's so intense. Keep bug spray and extra pair of gloves. Like keep that in your camera backpack along with the gear that you might need. You know what I have to keep also? Just snacks. I know there's other people like me. My blood sugar drops. I'm dizzy. I'm angry. I can't think straight. Like if you're like me, just have some kind bars or whatever you need to stay alive. Another aspect of your comfort can be your own state of mind. You often need to wait hours and hours for an animal to do something when it's doing nothing. Sometimes you can't even see the animal, like you're waiting for it to appear. I will put on a pair of my AirPods. I have the AirPods Pro that have noise cancellation in them, and I'll put them on transparency mode. And then I'll listen to a podcast, and the transparency mode actually picks up outside sounds and amplifies them. So I can hear things like birds chirping and moving and rustling, stuff I really need to hear about my environment, even clearer than without it. I will listen to Smartless or something else and it will keep my mind attentive so I don't get bored and leave. I think the most important tip is to put in the time. And I know that not everybody is like a professional wildlife photographer that can just travel around the world all of the time chasing every exciting experience. Some of us are home most of the time, and so that's why I think it's important to have a local place where you can visit regularly to take pictures of wildlife. And for me, that's actually my backyard. And we have a setup where we have a feeder with seed. And I know that's controversial for some people. If you're not into that, you can also just plant plants that the animals naturally like, um, things that have berries in the winter. If you have winter where you are, we have a kusa dogwood crab apple tree and, and the birds like to visit that. Find spots really close to you because these are spots that you're going to get to know. And it might seem more dramatic if you were in the African safari photographing giraffes or something, but you can't do that every day, right? You need some spot that you can go to before or after work or on your lunch break. And there might not seem to be much there at first, but when you spend some time there, you're gonna discover that there are uh, thrushes hiding in these bushes, but sometimes they come out in this one spot or where we are now. We were hiking here the other day and we saw a fox and I'm hoping to find him again or maybe find his den and sort of understand his behaviors and understand this one particular specimen and where the light will shine through these woods. And unless you go to the same spot repeatedly, you'll never sort of master those things. 
So you're probably taking for granted the wildlife that's close to you because you see it all of the time. But in other parts of the world, they, they don't have animals that you might consider common. So learn to appreciate them, learn their behavior, get photos of them eating the foods that they like or spending time with their families. We have tufted titmice where we are, tufted tit mouses. I don't know what the plural would be, but I learned this year that the previous nest of little chicks stays with the next generation. So you see siblings taking care of one another and it's really cute to watch. So just look a little closer and you'll find something you like to take pictures of near you. And you're leading us to another point, which is understand the animals and the biology. When I first started wildlife photography, I got to know other wildlife photographers and I discovered most of them were by trade biologists. Now this was like 20 years ago. They didn't necessarily understand the cameras. They were coming to me for help with the cameras and I was going to them for help to understand the behavior. They were just studying these animals and thought, oh, well, I should get a camera and take pictures of them. That is how you need to approach wildlife photography, not gear first, but behavior and species first. Understand the general behavior of the species and understand the specific behavior of the specimens that you're following. Know that these particular birds like this nest, and then huh, when the wind is still, they'll come out and get these berries. Know that Ospreys like to fish in this one spot, but only at low tide. At high tide, they might be at a different place. And once you understand all these different aspects of the behavior, you can improve your chances of getting a great shot. And then you can spend the limited time that you have in the most efficient way possible. And once you start taking these pictures that you like, you're gonna find that you keep one upping your last photo. So you'll think it's the best, then you take a new shot and you realize, no, this one's the best. I wanna get them eating, I wanna get them in flight. And a great place to keep track of that progress is a Squarespace portfolio for you to post your favorite pictures, your best photos, remove your last best one, put in your new favorite one, and see how your wildlife photography or any of your photography is improving. With Squarespace, you can set up a store to sell prints. You can accept deposits and book appointments from clients and even create a private space for individual client photos. Head to squarespace.com slash Chelsea to set up your free trial today. When you're ready, use the coupon code CHELSEA for 10% off. Now, people will see a big expensive camera like this and they think this just makes wildlife photography easy. They'll literally say things like, oh, I bet you could take a picture of a hummingbird at 100 meters away. Absolutely not. Wildlife photography is still really, really hard no matter how much you spend on gear because the secret is you always have to get close. It doesn't matter if I have this huge lens, I can't get sharp pictures far away because the atmospheric conditions will ruin it, right? So no matter how much you're spending, you have to get close. Tell them how to do that, Chelsea. Well, there are a number of ways, and the number one way is by being patient. If you see a group of animals and you approach it, you're a threat. You seem like a hunter, you seem like a predator. So all of the animals will leave. So a lot of your time will be spent hunkering down in a discreet location and waiting for the animals to come to you. Tony, you look like you're good at being discreet. Explain this situation. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of comments making camo jokes like, where was Tony this episode? I could only see his face. If you're listening to the audio podcast, Tony is wearing a camo jacket and also has camo on his lens. This helps. You can obviously still disturb animals. I'm not invisible, but I do find when I'm fully camoed up, I can get a little bit closer to an animal. I can stay a little bit closer. So do consider camo that it matches your environment. You should know there's multiple different types of camo. Like you can get white camo to match a snowy environment. Matching exactly isn't critical because the biggest part is that you're not one big solid color like it would be if you were wearing a black coat. Camo matters more in more secluded environments. If you're going to a popular park where people always are, the animals are gonna be used to people anyway. If you're hiking out a couple of hours where animals have never seen humans before and they're not yeah. accustomed to them, that's when it's more and more important. I've never found that it has kept the animals from seeing me camo. I feel like, I'm, at least I'm not flashy. Like if you go out wearing all neon, I think that you're actually scary to them. Or if you're wearing something that flaps in the wind or that's easy to spot, they see you when you're wearing camo. I think it's just more comfortable to look at. Uh, another cool. option is to get a blind. Like I have a pop-up blind that I can hide in and just poke my lens out. And that definitely allows me to get closer and closer to animals. We have separate videos on these things. But yeah. that's the secret that's going to let you get great pictures with any lens, even if you just have a 70 to 300, something inexpensive, if you can get close, you can get sellable professional photos. I find even in a blind, the main thing, like obviously they know the blind is there, but if I'm not in a blind, even if I'm in my backyard, I move my lens 
to put it on something else and it frightens them because I'm a movement they have to pay attention to. It changed their posture. They're a little scared. So being discreet is definitely the way to go. And also don't wear heavy colognes or anything. I don't wear perfume on days that we're shooting wildlife. Talk to local hunters in your area, especially if you're trying to photograph an animal they might hunt, like deer, because they'll know how to disguise themselves from that animal better than just about any photographer. It's, it's really not that different from hunting, except we just take a photo. Here's another thing to consider to improve your photos, and that's how you support your camera, because I was always a fan of hand-holding. Um, I felt like with a tripod, I just did not have the range of motion to get flying photos, or I couldn't react fast enough if my camera was on a tripod, but now, I got this really good tripod head. It's a gimbal and it's made by, um, help me out, Tony. You have a Gitzo. I have a Pro Media gear. I like my Gitzo better. It's really smooth. Um, it has a really great range of motion. So I feel like I could get flying shots. I do get flying shots with it. And it also keeps me from getting too tired or dropping my camera at a point when there's a lot of action. So I've actually gone from being strictly handheld to being a fan of my tripod with the appropriate head. Same for me. I use the Pro Media Gear model, mm -hmm. and it has allowed me to also introduce wildlife video into the mix because video was always too shaky to shoot handheld. And in fact, it's actually really hard at something like 1200 millimeters to get good video, even on a tripod. But I'm kind of excited to add this extra element of motion, especially in the modern social media world where people on TikTok consume video so continuously. I think that's gonna be an important skill for me. Uh, another tip would be to network, make friends with people in your local wildlife appreciation Facebook groups or internet groups or whatever. I can't really recommend a specific one because it's just really depends on your location, but you'll find bird watcher groups, biologists that do tours with people, other wildlife photographers, and they'll be able to help you find animals, give you tips, teach you the etiquette, which definitely exists. You don't want to be the bozo scaring away animals or um, putting them in danger or anything. So. That's a great way to get better. And like we said, we went out with our friend Tommy because he told us where a snowy owl was and we did not know it was there. So once you make these connections, you'll find more opportunities for shooting. Can I give one etiquette tip? Yeah. If, if somebody tells you about a location, you're not allowed to necessarily tell other people about it. They People almost always want to keep that secret so they don't disturb the animals. So at least ask the person who told you about a cool spot before you tell somebody else. Yeah, there are even animals where you just shouldn't tell anyone. We know where there are nesting bald eagles and we're just, we can't tell anyone that because we don't want people to bother them, disturb them. Maybe they won't have babies if a lot of people are looking at them. So we will die with that secret eagle. And the one last thing that I want to impart on you is that you should really just learn how to be respectful to animals and have the right etiquette. Sometimes people don't know they're doing the wrong thing or they have good intentions and they're feeding them the wrong thing or they're scaring them off. Um, I've even heard stories of photographers specifically scaring away breeding birds and ruining the local population. So become aware, don't just go out there, look up, research what you're doing. Don't go into places that tell you not to go there because you could hurt the animals because we're here to teach people to appreciate animals, not to hurt them. If you wanna learn more about wildlife photography, like get the cool gear, sure, but study the techniques in our book, Stunning Digital Photography, which has an entire chapter dedicated to it. We have packed it filled with everything we know about wildlife photography, including tons of video. So you can watch the videos or you can read the book or better yet, do both. Thanks for watching. And if you have any other tips that we missed, I'm sure you do, we're still learning, uh, put them down in the comments below so we can all share them. Thanks. And check out my portfolio at northropphotography.com. It has some of my wildlife pictures on it, some of my favorite of all time. And I'm using that as a basis to outdo myself because I'm not totally happy with those pictures. I, knew I, I know I can do better. I, can do better. I just have to get out and do it. And that's part of what makes me get out in the cold on a day like today. If you want your own portfolio, head to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Set it up completely free. Put your pictures in there. It'll make your pictures look awesome even if you just use the free trial. But if you love it, which I'm sure you will, use the coupon code Chelsea and get 10% off. Say it with me, C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Literally nobody said that with me. I'm so disappointed. Bye, see you next time. Thanks, bye. Be careful. This ice is stressed. <laughs>